Warning, the SCP Foundation Audio Archive is classified. Access by unauthorized personnel is strictly prohibited. Perpetrators will be tracked, located, and detained. Thirty-three Second Man Item Number SCP-1033 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-1033 is to be held in a 15-meter squared standard cell, lined with 5-meter thick lead plating. Personnel entering SCP-1033's chamber must wear approved Level A hazmat suits. If SCP-1033's routine changes, or if SCP-1033 attempts to escape, the two guards stationed outside SCP-1033's chamber are to be reinforced with eight more, all armed with containment kit 4-MK3, consisting of a SCAR-L assault rifle with underbarrel net launcher, two flashbang grenades, and one M67 fragmentation grenade. Description SCP-1033 is a middle-aged Caucasian male, approximately 193 centimeters, or 6 feet 4 inches tall. SCP-1033 was discovered in New York, having, according to several witnesses, materialized in the middle of a road. Interviews with witnesses found that people in the area experienced a vision encompassing white flash, accompanied by hearing a two-second burst of static from all directions. Witnesses were administered a Class A amnestic after the completion of the interview, followed by a media blackout regarding the incident. Upon initial inspection at the site of materialization, Foundation researchers found that SCP-1033 was emitting well over the instantaneous lethal dose rate limit of high-energy gamma, neutron, and X-radiation at approximately 15,000 SV per hour. SCP-1033 was initially contained within a shipping container surrounded by lead bricks, which was placed in his path. SCP-1033 was subsequently moved to storage site K, where he now resides. In all physical aspects, SCP-1033 is an unremarkable, balding middle-aged male. He is dressed in a business suit and carrying a briefcase. SCP-1033's behavior is cyclic with each cycle beginning approximately every 33 seconds. The following timeline is a transcription of that routine. 0 to 10 seconds. SCP-1033 walks 30 paces forward, glancing at his watch approximately every 10 steps. 10 to 15 seconds. SCP-1033 stops, kneels, and opens his briefcase. Inside the briefcase is a single envelope, marked with an unknown seal and prepaid brand mobile phone, capable of sending and receiving text messages and calls. SCP-1033 opens the envelope and pulls out a sheet of paper, marked with the words, Cable, Asymmetric Cipher, 0UUT5LM0022, Let's Ruffle Feathers. 15 to 21 seconds. SCP-1033 types 0UUT5LM0022 in a text message to the Australian mobile phone number 0404. Investigation shows that this number has yet to be assigned to any mobile phone. At 21 seconds in, SCP-1033 sends the message, puts the phone and letter back in his briefcase. 21 to 28 seconds. SCP-1033 is observed looking into the distance, regardless of what is actually in front of him. At 25 seconds in, SCP-1033 starts to chuckle quietly, having apparently spotted what he was looking for on the horizon. 28 to 33 seconds. At 28 seconds, SCP-1033 is blown backwards 3 meters and is observed writhing on the ground, screaming in apparent agony. Flush is seen being stripped off and flying behind SCP-1033 as other parts of him disintegrate. The injuries SCP-1033 sustains correspond with that of a victim of a 1.5 megaton nuclear device being detonated in close proximity. After the completion of this routine, 
SCP-1033 immediately reappears at the start of his routine in mid-step and begins the cycle again. If an object, human, or animal stands in the path of SCP-1033, he will make no attempt to stop and will continue his cycle, pushing whatever obstacle in his way along with him. Thank you for listening. Intro music was from Punch Deck. You can find more at soundcloud.com slash punch dash deck. Level 2 patrons or higher can get early, ad-free episodes. Rating, reviewing, or sharing always helps. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode.